Oh, in a practical way, it's already had an impact on our business. We were planning to participate in the Spectrum auction that's starting later this week or uh, later this month. Um, Tech Savvy's already withdrawn from that auction. We're simply not able to do that. We're reevaluating investments and we're looking at what this is going to do for rates for consumers, trying to protect them as much as possible. But, um, but it has an immediate impact on our business and on our customers. Now, am I right to say, Andy, that this decision, which was a big victory for, for companies like yours back in 2019, rates never did get lowered. They were frozen in the face of uh, all of the outcry from the incumbents and they've, they, there are a bunch of motions filed and this and that and the other. So rates kind of stayed yeah. where they were all this time. You've, you've been dealing with the, the previous rates. You didn't get the new low rates ever. That's right. The study was all started in 2016. Uh, some of the rates were lowered late in 2016, but not most of them weren't even reviewed. Um, those are the rates that stayed in place, even with the CRTC's decision in 2019 that would have lowered the rates substantially. Um, that never went into effect because the carriers got a stay right. of that decision. Um, so yeah, we've we've never um, since 2016 we're, we've been paying the same wholesale rates. Which means that, I mean, if there's a silver lining here for you and the other players, you haven't changed your whole business model based on lower rates that you now have to raise. You, you've still been operating on the same cost basis, or were you factoring in low rates that you would one day get? And because a lot of the time it's retroactive. Uh, it is generally retroactive. That was expected. And we were factoring in some kind of adjustment to the rates. The finding in 2016 was that the rates were not just and reasonable, which is the standard. Uh, the CRTC was doing a thorough review based on evidence, and the expectation was that the rates would come down somewhat. 2019, they came down quite a lot. And so since then, the expectation was that uh, they would, that they would, you know, be, be somewhere kind of anchored to those 2019 rates. And there was always kind of a question about, about uh, how much above those rates they would end up. There was never an expectation that they would end up, you know, right, right back where we started and the whole process through it. Okay, but it, and I just want to be super clear here. This doesn't. This decision, if it should hold uh, and the rates stay where they are, it doesn't put you out of business. It doesn't change what you were able to offer customers a week ago. It will be the same. It just won't be cheaper. So um, the. I mean, yes and no. In a way, our our uh, costs don't change, but our approach to those costs for the past five years has been really that we are anticipating that they're going to come down and be retroactive, and we've been positioning ourselves yeah. in all kinds of ways through through investments and through pricing for our customers. We've been uh, positioning ourselves to be able to take advantage of those lower rates. Now we have to reevaluate all of that in light of basically nothing changing on the wholesale side, while at the same time the incumbents continue to, uh, in some cases, undercut us in the retail market because they can take advantage of that um, you know, market dominance. So one of the underlying principles, as I understand it here, that drove the CRTC's decision, there are a couple of things. It's a very complex decision for people like me who are not in the space, don't understand all of the language that's being kicked around here. But one, it seemed to me that what partly what the CRTC was saying was, we need clarity. Uh, we, we're not going to get it unless we go back to where we were in 16. So we're going back to where we were in 16. So it's a kind of a, to me, it suggests that it could change again. Am I reading that right? Um, I mean, it's subject to appeals, but other than appeals, uh, no, I don't think that this uh, decision is. Uh, the CRTC doesn't seem to have any interest in looking into this further. What they really said was, uh, you know, we made all of these errors in the process, and now rather than expending the resources to do a proper analysis of the correct evidence and arrive at rates, which is sort of a normal process, instead, in the interests of some kind of stability, I guess, they're just going to throw out the whole process and freeze everything where it is. Um, I mean, that's not real stability. Th they also talk about using this to sort of move us into uh, a new framework that is expected that will allow fiber, uh, wholesale access to fiber to the home networks called the disaggregated framework. Yes. But that actually doesn't even exist. This is like jumping off a cliff without anywhere to land. So one of the principles the CRTC is applying here is something called uh, facilities-based com competition, uh, and they favor it. They say that clearly in their rulings. They favor facilities-based competition. Now, for the lay people out there, essentially this means 
they actually favor the idea of everybody building their own infrastructure. It's better to compete infrastructure owner to infrastructure owner. Am I reading that right, that they like the idea of parallel networks running? I mean, they are using language that has been used for a long time in policy making in, in telecom, and it's very, very misleading. Nobody has any opposition to building facilities. You have to invest in facilities to, to build networks that deliver services to consumers. The fact that the same companies who build those networks then deliver those services to consumers, that is, you know, not necess that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. It is generally how things operate in Canada because the most dominant companies on the network side also offer their services to consumers. But there are plenty of models right. where you can have facilities-based competition for building facilities and service-based competition for delivering services to consumers. This kind of decision completely eliminates that possibility for competition to consumers and instead um, you know, only leaves it open for those few large companies who will invest in most of the facilities to also deliver services. That's the reduction of competition to consumers. Uh, they're really Fair separate enough. issues. And the idea that there's, that there's this preference for facilities-based competition um, is, is actually misleading. But it gets to one thing that did come out, and we, and we should note, we'll just remind everybody who's not painfully aware, Bell is the parent company of this network. When that decision happened uh, and the big players were told you are going to have to resell space on your network, wholesale space, at a much lower rate than you think, the big incumbents, and Bell was front and center, said, well, then we're going to stop big spending on new infrastructure. We're not going to do the, the rural build that we said we were. Uh, and partly, you could see that as petulant, or you could see it as just a reflection of, if we can't actually protect our costs, if we can't get back the money we're investing, it's not worth our while. A drug company will not create a new drug if they don't have a patent on it. So where's the right balance between giving access, but also protecting the profits so the investment makes sense to investors? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it's equivalent to drug companies uh, and patents, but let's set that aside. Um, it is true that companies need compensation for their investments in networks. So the way, and at the same time, we have a wholesale model for service delivery in Canada. So the way that we have kind of squared those two things in Canada has been with this established model of setting rates. An independent regulator looks at the evidence, decides on what those costs are, and sets wholesale rates that will compensate uh, your parent company and other carriers for their investments. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the government also invests in a lot of those network builds, not all of them, surely, but many of them, especially where it's rural uh, or remote areas and investment is very expensive. Um, that was exactly what this process was all about. It was looking carefully at the evidence to arrive at wholesale rates that would allow competitors to uh, buy services and compete and at the same time compensate carriers for their investments. Nobody expects them to deliver these services below cost. That is my main concern about this decision. It throws out that process in the interest of closing the book and moving on, uh, and does not investigate any of the evidence, and it doesn't price out just and reasonable wholesale rates that will strike any kind of balance. All right, I want, I want to get a, at a piece of this story that is a bit dramatic, and that is that you are not alone, but uh, some of the players who are deeply affected by this have called for the resignation of the chair of the CRTC, uh, Ian Scott. It, it does remind me a little bit, uh, Andy, if I'm honest, of the old uh, you know, saying about if you go to kill the king, make sure you don't miss. Uh, however, the complaint here is that Scott comes from the industry. That hasn't always been the case. We've had CRTC chairs that are more from the legal competition side of things. Is there a concern when you have a, an incumbent from one of the big telecom players who I, I think we can naturally assume has a view of the world, or can we just trust that as a regulator, they're, you know, it's a body that will be fair and just? The fact that the chair comes from the telecom world uh, isn't the, you know, that's not the reason that uh, we're calling for his removal, which we have in a petition that we filed on Friday, uh, or for him to recuse himself from these kinds of decisions. Uh, you know, we, we had private concerns about how that might color his judgment in these cases or influence the commission. Um, but it's really, you know, come to a boil in the past few weeks. 